closest relatives in the animal kingdom. Apes, gorillas, monkeys, lemurs, all are primates. It's a big family, more than 200 species, roughly split into two groups. The primitive primates, lemurs, tossiers, and bush babies, and the higher primates, the apes, the monkeys, and us. The biggest is the mountain gorilla, 400 pounds of solid muscle. The smallest, the mouse lemur, is tiny enough to sit in a human's hand and still have room to stretch its tail. All primates have three things in common. Strong hands with agile fingers, forward pointing eyes, and the largest brain relative to body size of any land animal. This chimp is just a baby, but its intelligence is written in the heavens. According to Chinese mythology, people born under the sign of the monkey are sharp-witted and quick to learn. However, they're not always reliable and can be inclined to mischief. The chimpanzee's brain power is a formidable weapon for survival. But it's not a matter of all brains and no brawn. When this chimp grows up, she'll weigh in at a hefty 75 pounds, and those teeth can bite. She'll be fast on her feet, too, on the ground and in the trees. Most primates are tree dwellers, living in the dense rainforests of Asia, South America, or Central Africa. Others have adapted to life on the plains and even the snow of high mountains. The most widespread of all primates, the human, has extended its range all over the planet. In evolutionary terms, we split from the chimp about seven million years ago, but we still have 98.4% of our genetic material in common, making us closer to chimps than zebras are to horses. In the forests of Cameroon in Africa, legend tells of a man who fed bananas to a group of monkeys. One day, the ungrateful monkey stole his daughter and spirited her away. Desperate to get her back, the man drank a magic potion which turned him into a monkey. In this disguise, he joined a monkey troop and took a monkey bride. By the time he found his daughter, he had raised a new family, half monkey, half man. And they, according to the legend, were the first chimpanzees. Chimps live in complex social groups of 80 or more. Much of their time is spent just sitting around grooming. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, reinforces the bonds within the group. Most social animals practice some sort of grooming. Wolves and dogs lick and wrestle. Elephants are seen entwining trunks. Humans gossip. And chimps rummage for nits. The group operates a strict hierarchy, a pecking order as to who's boss, who gets first pick at the food, and who mates with whom. Squabbles are frequent 
particularly among the males as they jockey for position. One clear advantage of living in a big community is mutual protection. Squirrel monkeys in the South American rainforest live in large groups, sometimes as many as 200. They travel through the trees performing daredevil acrobatic feats, their eyes forever flickering on the lookout for danger. Baboons living on the plains of Africa have nowhere to hide. They are sitting ducks for any passing leopard or lion in search of a baboon breakfast. So they stay constantly on guard. Male sentries at the edge of the group sniff the air. If they scent a predator, they can form a posse and scare it away. Like the baboons, our chimp could, with a little help from her troop, chase off most predators. Any defense strategy is improved by a good early warning system. The African verbet monkey has six distinct warning calls, each signifying a different threat. Teeth chattering warns of snakes. A short bark means threat from the air, which tells the vervets to hurry up into the trees where the bird can't attack without damaging its wings. With fewer predators, our chimp doesn't need all the vervets' vocabulary, nor does she have to produce the incredible noise of the South American howler. Its jaws have a special resonating chamber, so it can be heard up to two miles away. The warning calls of our primate cousins have had legendary uses. It's said that Barbary macaques on the rock of Gibraltar once warned the British garrison of a Spanish invasion. Ever since, the monkeys have been seen as a symbol of the British presence there. If they were to leave, says the legend, so would the Brits. During World War II, Winston Churchill issued orders for the rock to be regularly restocked with macaques. Not superstitious by nature, he knew better than to monkey around with a good legend. Some creatures cry out when threatened, some fight, others stand frozen with fear. Still others bring in the heavies. Guerrilla troops rarely number more than 15 members, sometimes as few as five. They're protected by their boss, the giant silverback. He's usually earned his gray hairs. He's the absolute ruler of the group, with first pick of the food, and the only one allowed to mate with the females. Challenges to his authority are rare, and the stakes are high. Whoever loses, silverback or challenger, will be driven out to a life alone in the forest. Only one higher primate is used to this kind of life. The orangutan lives alone, spending its days wandering the forests of Borneo and Sumatra in Southeast Asia. Each individual claims strict territorial rights over its patch of forest, warning off interlopers with eerie cries. They are among the strangest looking creatures on the planet. The male develops huge fibrous cheek flaps, perhaps to make him look bigger and more threatening to rivals. His movements are slow and lazy. He is literally in a world of his own. The word orangutan is Malay for man of the forest. One legend claims they're descended from humans. Punished for crimes against the gods, they forfeited their power of speech and were condemned to live as lonely outcasts. The Dayak people of Borneo worship the solitary wanderers as the lost spirits of their ancestors, big, shaggy, pot-bellied ghosts. 
Back in the chimpanzee community, the young chimp is never short of companionship. Chimps, like all higher primates, need a lengthy childhood simply because there is so much to learn. A young chimp will feed from its mother for as long as three years and relies on her until it's fully mature at around eight years old. All young chimps have a tuft of white fur on their rumps. A chimp tail light, it makes the baby easy to spot. The silver leaf monkey of East Asia takes this strategy to extremes. The adults are brown, black, and gray, but the babies all come in bright orange, a glowing beacon in the green of the forest. Mountain climbers dress by the same principle, wearing bright colors to make it easier for rescue teams to spot them. With no safety harnesses, primates are born with an instinct to hang on. When making death-defying leaps through the trees, they need it. Even on solid ground, a firm grip is needed. Young baboons hitch a ride any way they can. According to one of Aesop's fables, when an ape has twins, it loves one baby but scorns the other. The mother carries her favorite in her arms, while the despised one has to cling to her belly. When the mother grows tired, she drops her darling, but the less favored twin clings on. The moral? Sheer tenacity is often more useful than being the favorite. The common marmoset usually gives birth to twins, and the parents share childcare between them. The mother looks after one while the father raises the other, handing the infant over to the mother only for suckling. There are other ways to travel. Gorilla babies start life clinging to their mother's stomach, but as they grow older, they move up to ride on her back, jockey style. As our chimp grows older, adolescence brings an important rite of passage. Male chimps stay put in the group, but the female often leaves to find a new community. It's thought she's in search of new mates to avoid inbreeding, but while looking for her new home, she'll live alone, away from the protection of the troop. It's a challenging and dangerous time. There are noble precedents for her journey. In Monkey, a classic of Chinese literature, a monkey is expelled from heaven for stealing the peaches of immortality. It goes off alone on an epic journey to find a path back to paradise. Using wit and magic to subdue demons and dragons, finally it is welcomed back to heaven as a Buddhist saint. The ape who truly touched the heavens was Ham, the American Chimpanzee. In January 1961, he spent 16 minutes flying in a spacecraft at 5,000 miles an hour. At splashdown, he seemed none the worse for his trip and earned his place in the history books as the first primate in space, beating the Russian human Yuri Gagarin by three months. It used to be thought that chimps lived in caves. Their scientific name, Pan Troglodytes, means cave dwelling. But actually, they build nests from branches and vegetation to provide a cushion and some safety from predators. For chimps like humans, the night is for sleeping. But there are primates for whom life begins when darkness falls. Though it has the face of an owl and the killer instinct of a shark, the tarsier is a primate. Its eyes, each weighing more than the creature's brain, see in the dark, so it can stalk and kill small birds and reptiles. If humans had eyes so big, they'd be the size of cauliflowers. In Australia, they fear Yaramayahu, a frog-like man with huge eyes and suckers at the end of its feet 
said to fall upon children and drain the life from their bodies. The origin of this superstition seems to be the tarsier, yet there are no tarsiers in Australia. It's probable this gruesome legend was brought to Australia by Malayan settlers. The strangest primates of all are found in Madagascar. 120 million years ago, long before primates had evolved, this huge island was wrenched from the African mainland. Around 60 million years later, some early African primates, ancestors of today's monkeys and apes, are thought to have floated across on rafts of vegetation. Cut off from the rest of the world, they have since evolved as a unique group of primates, the lemurs. One of the spookiest is the eye eye, a nocturnal lemur which locates its prey by tapping the tree with its bony middle finger. It homes in with its rodent-like teeth, chisels through the bark, and with its specially extended finger reaches in and spears the grub out from under the wood. The people of Madagascar fear it above all other animals, for the eye eye, they believe, brings death. With few big predators and no monkeys or apes to rival them, the 24 species of lemur have an easy life. Local legend says that the ring-tailed lemur worships the sun. Since it's a common sight to see them at the start of the day grabbing a few rays, the legend is easy to believe. The largest and most elusive of all the lemurs is the Indri. Its name comes from a misunderstanding. When early Europeans first encountered the creature, their local guides pointed at the trees shouting, Indri, Indri, which just means there it is. The Europeans wrote the word in their notebooks and the name stuck. A large graceful lemur called, there it is. Back on mainland Africa, alone in the wild, our chimp must fend for herself. She'll eat anything, fruit, insects, even meat if she can catch it. Chimps even know that certain plants are good medicine. They've been known to chew aspelia leaves, an antibiotic used in human medicine to get rid of stomach parasites. Baboons, too, are meat eaters, ambushing their prey. When European explorers first visited Africa, they heard fantastic tales of a monstrous killer ape capable of terrifying acts of ferocity. Only in the last hundred years have scientists identified the subject of such stories as the gorilla. It seems well cast for the part, huge and fierce looking, but appearances can be deceptive. Far from being a hunter, the gorilla is a strict vegetarian. Unless it's threatened, only fruits, berries, and leaves have anything to fear. But the myth that somewhere out there lives a ferocious primate still persists all over the world. The rubber tappers of Borneo fear the Ut Ut, a long-legged ape that cuts off your head while you rest. Don't sleep in the forest, they warn, or the Ut Ut will get you. In Zaire, they fear the wild man of the woods, the Pongo, capable of bringing down an elephant with a single blow. And in the snowy Himalayas, there is the Yeti, or abominable snowman. Many have searched for the Yeti. Even Sir Edmund Hillary, first to climb Mount Everest, who led an expedition. But to date, only footprints have been found. Some of the tales are less fantastic. The bonobo, or pygmy chimp, was thought to be a mythical beast until in 1929, it was found to be real, living deep in the forests of Zaire. They're similar to chimps living in the same close communities, but they're slimmer. 
When they walk upright, they are the most human looking of all primates. Early myths describe them as a race of tiny people. Many primates can walk upright, but the only one designed to do so all the time is the human. Our skeleton has adapted. The spine adjusted our center of gravity. Long legs allow us to stride out, but our arms have shortened. If we had arms as long as a chimp's, we could easily scratch our ankles without having to bend over, though walking on our hands would still be difficult. The great apes, like our chimp, practice knuckle walking with the feet flat, but the fingers folded. The knuckles are especially strengthened to do this. But most other primates spend their time in trees and are ill-adapted to walking on the ground. Instead, they have developed gymnastic skills. Most monkeys of the New World are equipped with long prehensile tails which act as a fifth limb. The tail is strong enough to support the monkey's weight, enabling it to hang from the trees and reach the remote branches where the leaves and fruit are most tender. There are many stories telling how the monkey got such a useful tail. In the Tagalog myth from the Philippines, Bathala, the creator of all things, molded a man from clay. The clay slipped from his hands and he caught it by the lower end of its back, which stretched into a long tail. You, said Bathala, making the best of a bad job, will become a monkey and live in the trees forever. The incredible agility of the capuchin monkey earned it a reputation as a dancer. In the 18th and 19th century, it was common to see an organ grinder with a capuchin monkey on the top of his barrel organ, jigging along to the music. The monkey's agility has been exploited in other ways. In Thailand, some specially trained macaques are put to work as coconut farmers, climbing the high palms to gather the crop. The monkey's harvesting skills can be used to their own advantage. A raiding party of capuchins can bring swift devastation to a field of crops. A Hindu story tells of a monkey stealing mangoes from a giant's garden. As punishment, the giant burned its hands and face, and now all Hanuman langurs have black faces and hands. In another Hindu tale, the god Rama lost his beautiful bride to a marauding demon. Rama's friend, a monkey named Hanuman, saved the bride and as a reward was made a god himself. The temple at Varanasi in India is sacred to him. Hanuman Langars are allowed to come and go as they please. The real king of the swingers is the gibbon. It has no prehensile tail, but gets around by a hand-over-hand -hand style of locomotion known as brachiation. Capable of incredible speed through the trees, it punctuates its journey with great leaps through the air. It used to puzzle observers. How do gibbons know that the branch they're about to leap to won't be rotten and break under their weight? The answer is they don't. Gibbons sometimes fall to the forest floor, dazed and confused, victims of forgetting to look before they leap. In the sacred stable in Nikko, Japan, are three monkeys who haven't moved for 300 years. They remind passers-by of the Buddhist motto, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. To survive on her own in the wild, our chimp will need all of the primate's special abilities. Her forward pointing eyes enable her to see the world fully in three dimensions and judge distances. She can see in full glorious color too, enabling her to identify her favorite ripe fruit. The thumb is sufficiently flexible to meet with the other fingers in a versatile grip, 
an ability known as the opposable thumb. The delicacy of this grip can be seen in the chakma baboon, feeding on seeds. Our chimp can extend the capabilities of her body through the use of tools. Second only to ourselves, chimps are the most sophisticated tool users in the animal kingdom. They have been seen using sticks to fish for ants and termites. A bunch of half-chewed leaves becomes a sponge to collect rainwater from hollows in trees. And in one community in West Africa, chimpanzees use rocks to break open nuts. Needs concentration, but they get there in the end. Hand, eye, and brain coordination is best observed, though, in another primate. The creature that wasn't content with rocks, leaves, and sticks, and didn't rest until it had come up with fancy nutcrackers, exquisite china teacups, and the easy adjust stainless steel one-fits-all monkey wrench. Not only are primates capable of learning new skills, they can teach them too. On Kushima Islet in Japan, a female macaque in a group being studied by scientists was seen throwing grains of wheat into the sea, then scooping up the clean grains with her hand. When provided with sweet potatoes, she also rinsed them off in the sea. These skills were very quickly passed on to other members of her troop. Remarkable though these skills are, when Charles Darwin first suggested that humans were evolved from something like the apes, people thought he was trying to make monkeys out of them. The similarity between humans and primates has had some unfortunate consequences. During the Anglo-French War in the 19th century, a circus ship was wrecked off the northeast coast of England near Hartlepool. The sole survivor was a monkey, the patriotic people of Hartlepool had never seen a Frenchman. They tried the monkey as a French spy, found it guilty, and hanged it. The people of Hartlepool are still sometimes called monkey killers, but rarely to their faces. At last, our wandering chimp finds a new troop. She'll need all her social skills of grooming and communication to find acceptance, and she'll have to start at the bottom of the pecking order. But if she's successful in producing offspring, her standing in the community will gradually improve, and all her skills will be passed on to a new generation. Witness Museum, created by combining traditional filmmaking techniques with state-of-the-art graphics. Stripping away the mysteries of nature and science to reveal the essence of each subject. Bringing the world into sharp focus. The making of Eyewitness. The distinct style of the eyewitness books is the basis for each of the programs. Each half-hour episode is based on a book title. The eyewitness book's visual style gives the program makers a starting point and a challenge. The challenge of transferring clarity and super-realism into moving images and sound. Now let's take a look behind the scenes at the making of Ape. 
It's not always possible to bring an animal into the eyewitness studio, so in Ape, we went to Twycross Zoo to do our filming. And for two days, the team worked together to transform a disused building into a complete studio, lights and all. Once the studio was finished, a lorry full of vegetation helped to create the right atmosphere. It was all hands on deck before the set was ready for one of the apes to be brought in. Enter one of our stars. Understandably, at first the change of environment was quite bewildering and the sight of a camera seemed to induce a touch of stage fright. But after a short while, the nerves faded away and the gorilla's natural curiosity took over. To demonstrate the difference between chimpanzees and human beings, the designers utilized 3D computer graphics. The previously shot footage of the chimp is stored into the memory of a computer. Once there, the designers can manipulate it in any way they choose. We electronically morphed the chimpanzee's skeleton into that of a human being to show the differences. It looks easy, but each step can take hours. And thanks to this computer, we can see an evolutionary process in a matter of seconds that in reality has taken millions of years. Throughout the eyewitness series, a great many objects have been filmed against a white background, creating the unique eyewitness style. But every single object that appears in the series must go through the same painstaking process to make it look its best. Every detail is carefully inspected before it's time for the camera to roll. After filming, all the props and supports must be electronically removed before the object can be included in the finished sequence, where, in true eyewitness style, it is seen clear and clean against the white background. 